This is where it all starts for you. I'm going to show you how to get started playing live solo gigs. Now, real quick, there's a timeline in the description of this video because this is one of those guides that you're probably going to want to refer back to from time to time. And actually, I encourage you to watch this. Go through this more than once. Take notes. Now, we're diving right into this, but I want you to always remember these two things. Number one, you're going to build a different and brand new skill set, and this is just going to help you not not only get better at playing guitar and playing your instrument and singing and of course doing those two at the same time but you're building this new skill set of playing in front of people it is completely different than just sitting in your bedroom or your studio playing music so that's something that you're going to build and no one can ever take that away from you secondly you're about to start making money you're going to start making an income doing something you love doing so let's get into this your first task is to learn five songs now not just any five songs these five songs need to mean something to you i want you to pick your favorite five songs and songs that you feel like you can learn and just perform the best and pour your heart into now i do recommend that maybe at least two maybe three of these songs be popular songs and it doesn't matter what genre but just be songs that people or the majority of people are going to recognize then maybe pick a couple of songs on the b side of the album that you really like now important i want you to learn these songs like the back of your hand in regards to the lyrics and be smooth in playing the progressions here and of course playing and singing those together however i want you to put your own unique twist to that i don't really want you to play it just like the record who wants to hear that we just play the record if that's what we're gonna do I want you to put your own unique style to it so be yourself as you're learning these songs okay maybe that might mean uh, one of the vocal lines is slightly different or maybe the way you play the progression is slightly different you're not gonna make it something that's unrecognizable but you're going to play the song and sing the song with your own style putting your own twist to it okay now on that note you may find that one or more or maybe all five songs need to be modified to fit your vocal range and your vocal and playing style and that's okay this is where it comes back to putting your own unique twist to these songs but I'm going to show you just a quick trick that I use and by the way I transpose probably 80% or more of the songs that I play because I do a lot of stuff from the 80s so one of the songs I do is Peace of Mind by Boston and God knows I do not have the voice of Brad Delp <laughs> he's amazing and I believe the the natural key of that song is C sharp minor So I'm not even going to attempt this on camera here because that's way too high for me. Uh, so what I did, I just found a comfortable key to play that in. So we've got the chords. And again, this is just one small part. We're not going to spend a lot of time on this. I just want to share this tip with you real quick. I'll, I'll go in depth on this in another video, okay? Uh, but there are four chords in this main part, okay? C sharp minor, okay? Then we've got an A. E, B. So I know that structure there, I just need to play that same structure in a different key, starting with a minor, major, 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 okay? So what I did, I played around with some different progressions. I ended up doing this in F sharp minor. I know I need to start with a minor somewhere, and it's pretty easy to figure out the rest after that. So I play it in this key here. And one other tip real quick before we move on here is what I like to do is to find maybe the highest part in that song, whether it be a part in the verse or, or a chorus, usually it might be the chorus or a bridge or something like that. And I'll transpose the song in a way that I can hit that higher note in my vocal range, my comfortable range, and then transpose the song accordingly. People living in competition is to have my peace of mind. Take a look ahead. Take a look ahead. And one more tip. The last thing you want to do is to be straining to hit notes. Because remember, when you're up there playing these paid shows, it could be anywhere from 
two to four hours. I typically play shows that are three and four hours. So you don't want to strain your voice because you've got to have that longevity. All right, so you've got your songs together. You're ready to get out there and let's get this thing started. The absolute best thing you can do is go to an open mic. I'm here at this place called Bootleggers Brewing in Tampa, Florida. I love this place, by the way. And this is a great place to start just playing live in front of people, getting used to playing in front of people. Uh, you're going to start really building that skill set at a place like an open mic. I'm actually going to have uh, Sevi. he's hosting open mic. I'm going to have him come out here in a little bit and we're going to just chat briefly about some things you can expect at an open mic. So your next step now is to find an open mic in your area and if you don't know where one is right off the bat, well, hey, just jump on the internet and do a search open mic and then type in your town or the city you live in and you might be surprised at how many open mics there are in your area but I want to encourage you to go as often and maybe go to as many open mic nights as you possibly can because the one way you're going to get better and going to prep yourself for getting up there on stage for the paid gigs is to hone in on your craft get really tight get really good and get really comfortable playing and singing in front of people and I can't think of a better opportunity than going to an open mic to do that now this one important note I want you to treat the open mic as if you're getting paid okay I want you to have that mentality a lot of folks will go to open mic because it's fun or they just want to get up there and just jam hey there's nothing wrong with that but you have a different purpose you have a different calling here you are prepping yourself to play live in front of people and to get paid for doing that okay so treat it as if you're there going to perform and you're getting paid for that okay because this is going to pay off for you in the long run trust me and this is an ongoing process by the way I still perform at this particular open mic one it gives me a chance to just hang out with some other like-minded musicians and sometimes we might even do a little collaboration up there and secondly it gives you the opportunity to maybe try out some new songs maybe you just learned a new song and you want to go try that out at open mic kind of see how it flows well that's a good opportunity to do that and keep in mind guys I'm currently at the time of filming this playing two to three live gigs a week and I still go to this open mic when I can if I don't have a gig that night now I mentioned a special guest that we're gonna have real quick here and guys I know I'm spending a bit more time on open mic here but this is just is such a great opportunity to build this skill set and prepare you for getting out there to play those live gigs so Sevi here he goes by a traveling gentleman he also plays solo gigs quite a few probably two or three maybe even more a week and he actually hosts this open mic that I'm at here dude you have been hosting Hosting actually open mic for a long time so I just wanted to have you on here real quick to uh, just tell our viewers because they're wanting to get into playing live solo gigs what are some of the things uh, to expect like playing open mic what, what, are, what are your recommendations how would you approach that you know so when you're going out to an open mic night if you are looking to you know just you know get your feet wet just you know test the waters you know sure start yourself off with one two very confident songs that you have if you're starting to get in that comfortable range and now you're trying to look for some standing gigs uh, generally a lot of places are going to use their open mic nights to uh, kind of book that because they'll have the open mic guy that's hosting as well as the bartender that's on duty kind of, both kind of rate how your performance went when that comes to play you want to have at least three to five songs ready to go. Some of your strongest, maybe some of your B track stuff as well, because that kind of lets them know what your vibe is, uh, where your quiet parts may be, and uh, it sets you up to build a better repertoire with the plays. And then after that, of course, you know, even for my introverts out there who are exactly like who I am, uh, you know, make friends with the open mic host. And, you know, take take your time to get out there and go out multiple times and build your repertoire, build your stage comfort, because uh, that's really the best way to do it. Yeah, this is what this is all about. You, you're building your stage presence. You're getting used to playing in front of people, and this is that stepping stone to getting out there and playing the live show. So absolutely. And if I may, I'm sorry, just yeah, one yeah, more thing. Yeah, sure. For those of you out there that are getting into this. I promise you, you're gonna forget words to songs. You're gonna forget how the chords are. It's all gonna come full circle. I've made, I've been doing this for six years, and I've forgotten the words to so many songs, even songs that I know like the back of my hand. Um, never be nervous. Just go straight through it. Pick up where you left off and practice for that. And get your, and again, just get yourself comfortable with your instrument because when that happens. 
nobody can stop you from doing what you're doing. I also want you to start filming your open mics. If you can bring a friend along that will film for you, or if you can just set a phone up on a tripod. I just use my iPhone for practically everything. I'm using it to film this right now. Two key reasons for that. One, you can go back and actually see how you're performing and critique yourself. Okay, I kind of went flat here. I totally missed this chord, or whatever the case may be. Or, you know what? I nailed this song. Let's make sure I replicate that next time. But the second reason is you also want to have something to present to the venue, the manager of the venue, the owner of the venue, so that you can get into playing those live paid solo gigs and we're going to get deeper into that later. Along with performing at these open mics, I also encourage you to go out and see as many other solo shows as you can, okay? Now, I know that's a lot, but I think it's important that you saturate yourself in this and the reason for going to see other performers is because you want to take mental notes of the flow of their show, how many breaks they take, how they're engaging with the audience or are they engaging with their audience? Are they taking requests? Quest, is there a specific style or specific genre they stick to? Just absorb everything that's going on around you at those shows. Of course, give them a little tip or a big tip because you're going to want those tips as well. And I really encourage you to see as many performers as you possibly can. Again, saturate yourself in this because this is just going to help you get better faster. Now, this is also the time you want to start thinking about what style of music that you want to go for for your live solo performances. And there's no right or wrong answer here. I just want you to choose the path that's appropriate to you and choose the path that's going to make you happy because that's going to show in your performance. Okay, If you're out there playing songs you just really don't like, that's going to show. So I'm going to give you two high-level paths here. One is the path of playing the hits playing the top 40s and oftentimes that spreads across multiple genres and multiple eras. For example, my friend Tourist Bob, he actually plays out for a living. He does this for a living. He plays probably five or six shows, maybe even more each week, and he prides himself on knowing pretty much all of the hit songs. Doesn't matter what genre or what era, and he thrives off that. The other path is one that's more specific, and this is where you might choose a genre or a couple of genres or maybe even an era. For example, my tag, this is a path I've chosen, my tag is 80s with a side of 70s and I play rock and pop and some hair band music from those eras there. That's what I love, that's what fuels me and that's something that I enjoy so of course that shows in my performance. I got a good friend Brian Ray, he took that path as well. Uh, he plays country and southern rock. That's what he loves, that's what he enjoys to do and it shows in his performance. So this is something that you want to think about uh, if you want to be all over the map and just playing the hits. If you love it when someone requests a song and you're like, I know it, I know that's a hit, doesn't matter what style or what era, it's just a popular song, that fuels some people's fire. So go that route if that's you. If it's not you, think about the specific genres uh, or genre that you want to play on stage. Whatever is going to make you happy and whatever you can pour your heart into and get the best performance from. And real quick, just because you choose a specific path, that doesn't mean that you can't expand. You can certainly do that. The key point is to make sure you're having an awesome time on stage because once again, that's going to shine through in your performance. Now let's talk about your image real quick because this is very important and it really depends on like your genre and your persona and just what type of image you're going for. Like you can see on screen here, Dean Johannesson, this guy, he does like oldies, like I think 40s and 50s, maybe some 60s. He's got this really cool vintagey look and he dresses like this at every show. Then you've got my buddy Brian. He goes by Brian Ray. You guys know him. He's the, uh, he's the lead singer for the Southern Creek Band and he has more of kind of a uh, working class look. He plays country and southern rock. Now look at me, I'm wearing, and I, forgive me, I'm sweating a little bit because it's hot out here. I've just got a regular v-neck, a nice v-neck shirt on. It's, it's kind of fitted. Um, I've got, you know, fitted jeans on and I think these are American Eagle jeans I'm wearing here. And I've just got some cool black tennis shoes. Uh, not really putting it out there too much, but it's still a nice image for me. It's what I want to portray. I got some cool bracelets here my wife gave me, and I got a different wedding ring for my cakes even. It's just kind of like my good look charms, but that's my image. Normally I'm in a black shirt. I'm playing at this winery, Keel and Curly Winery, so I'm wearing a blue for the winery. Now, one more image I want to show you. 
Uh, I don't always wear this. I, I'm in Florida and in the summer it's very hot. There are some gigs I will wear shorts at, but I try to make it as classy as possible. For example, on screen here, I'm at another winery at Fiorelli Winery. Uh, this is out in Bradenton, Florida. I'm wearing a Hawaiian shirt and I'm wearing shorts, but I've got my nice shoes on. It's still a nice image, but you just don't want to look sloppy, guys. You know, you can have your image and sometimes that image might change depending on the gig. Like if you're in the middle of the summertime and you're outdoors, or if it's just a different vibe a different feel so just kind of go by that and adjust your image accordingly but just don't be sloppy since we're talking about music styles genres and your presentation you need to be adding more songs to your set list during this time now remember what I said earlier once you get beyond that you've learned the five songs and you're performing at the open mics on a regular basis everything from that point to what we're talking about right now should be done simultaneously because it all coincides it all works together but you want to be adding more songs to your set list because you want to be ready for that first gig what I recommend is having at least three hours worth of music ready to go so that means probably 40 to 45 songs now this may be different in your area but I'm in the Tampa Florida area and the surrounding areas about half of my gigs are three hours the other half of my shows are four hours I recommend starting out with three hour shows Shows. I do have one two hour show, but keep in mind that you get paid according to how long you play in most cases, okay? So make sure you have at least three hours worth of music so that you're ready to perform that and you want to continuously learn and add songs to your set list. You don't want to be performing the exact same thing, you know, every time you go there. That will eventually get old. So you do want to keep adding some new material and I'm kind of preaching to myself on this one. I need to put some more songs on my list as well. Uh, by the way, as far as set lists and what to use uh, to compile that what I do is I just use Apple pages the Apple pages app I copy and paste lyrics in there now there are some fancy tools out there I think ultimate guitar has a, has a really good tool I saw another performer using that and uh, she was able to even type in the key she wanted the song in and it would transpose it for her so you can go for that but just remember guys you don't want to be staring at your iPad the entire time that you're on stage I do use an iPad up there but it's just as a safeguard uh, if you have to stare at it the entire entire time then you're not ready to perform that song live so just a side note on that now it's time to talk about what we love to talk about the most as musicians and that is music gear so I'm going to share with you the minimal gear you need to get started playing live solo gigs and there are two paths that you can choose you can choose the traditional PA route which that's the route that I took early on and I'm still using that today or you can go the portable system route which I'm considering making the jump to that and I'll share why when we get to that part now one quick note the brands that you're gonna see on screen here I am NOT sponsored by them at the time of this video at least but I am an affiliate for Sweetwater and I'm going to have links for everything that I use in the description of this video if you decide to purchase any gear through those links I do get a small commission and of course that helps support the channel here so thank you starting with the traditional PA route let's start with a sound source and here I'm using an electro voice ZLX powered speaker this is a 12 inch thousand watt powered speaker here and this is probably all you'll ever need for any live solo gig now the cool thing about these modern powered speakers two things real quick one you can see this one has multiple inputs or two inputs on here so if you wanted to plug in a mic and a guitar you could do that I do recommend a soundboard we're gonna get to that next but you could indeed plug in your microphone and a guitar and hey you've got volume Volume. you've got sound now of course you would want a DI box and maybe some effects for the acoustic to make it sound awesome and you'll want something to enhance your vocals as well probably a compressor maybe a vocal effects processor something okay and we're gonna talk more about that coming up soon now with a speaker of course you need a speaker stand and here I'm using an on stage speaker stand and these are good stands to start with uh, I've been using these for about two and a half years now uh, the only thing is both of these stands the screws are starting to strip
strip a little so having some issues with them i'm going to have to upgrade and it goes back to it might be a better idea to spend a little bit extra to get better quality gear instead of getting the cheapest thing that's out there while we're talking about speakers and again you probably only need just one of those speakers that we just talked about i know i have two but uh, most venues i play at i can get by just fine with just one speaker i do have a floor monitor now this is an electro voice floor monitor it's a powered monitor but you probably don't need something this substantial there are other smaller monitors you just need to be able to hear yourself so i would get a, a quality monitor but you don't necessarily need something that's this large another part of playing live solo gigs is really trying to do more with less because a lot of times it's an issue of space and of course you're having to load and unload set up tear down all that good stuff and in many cases you're probably going to be standing very close to your main speaker anyway and sometimes that's all you may need you may not actually even need a monitor at all in some venues next with a traditional pa route is a soundboard so you're going to connect this to your speaker to your main speaker now again you saw the speaker that i'm using you have the two inputs you could just plug directly into those but the thing about having a soundboard is just more flexibility not only with your channel volumes but also with the EQ with onboard effects and there's just a lot of other bells and whistles on the board that you may or may not use but you've got the flexibility to do so also you've got multiple channels here for example my wife sings with me on a couple of songs so I want a channel for her mic as well and I've got room to grow if I ever decided to do like a, a duo with multiple instruments or something like that well you've got the room to do that microphones do not cheap out on the microphone actually don't cheap out on any of this stuff remember you want professional music gear that's meant to be used in live situations that you can use for for a long period of time without it crapping out on you okay uh, so I am a big fan of the sure brand again I'm not sponsored by them but those mics and my voice just kind of go good together okay so I started out using a sure SM58 which is a great vocal microphone that's an industry standard microphone uh, but I upgraded later to the sure beta 58a probably a $60 difference maybe but it made a huge difference in my vocals and of course there are other great brands out there for microphones so just do your research on them but it's going to serve you to get a good quality microphone now with a microphone I do recommend getting a really good quality mic stand I had another brand mic stand that just fell apart on me like just in the middle of a show it was a boom stand uh, so I upgraded to this K&M mic stand and after talking to my Sweetwater rep he recommended me this because he said this is what a lot of the pros use for touring and remember I'm playing out anywhere from two to three times sometimes more a week so I need equipment that's going to last I know I keep harping on quality gear versus cheap gear but just trust me on this it's only going to save you in the long run while we're talking about vocals I like to have vocal effects now you could use the effects on the board that I shared with you earlier it's got some nice reverbs and delays in there and actually the preamps in that soundboard that Mackie soundboard they're pretty good the vocals sound okay in that board they sound great but I liked this specific pedal here uh, after a friend of mine turned me on to it this is the TC Helicon mic mechanic pedal uh, and you don't necessarily have to go with this specific pedal but I do recommend getting another pedal for the compression for your voice and also maybe the effects on that pedal might be a little bit better than what you'll get on the soundboard now let's talk about your acoustic guitar i'm assuming you're probably playing acoustic for your live solo gigs you do want some sort of acoustic di box at least minimal and i would recommend having some reverb as well now you could get just one di box for your acoustic and then maybe use the reverb on your soundboard that will give you a really nice acoustic sound now in my case i'm using the line six pod go the reason i chose this unit is because i play a little electric at my solo gigs as well i use a looper so sometimes i'll loop an acoustic rhythm i'll pick up the electric and i'll play some solos over it it's just a little added touch that i give my audience there i've got a video on how i do all that of course i'll leave that in the description but the pod go gives me the flexibility to create some really nice sounds for 
acoustic and there are also some patches that you can purchase from other people out there. I actually purchased one. I think it was from uh, Worship Tutorials. I purchased their acoustic patch that they created for the Podgo and that sounds great. I just added a little bit more effects and hey, that's what I'm using. But there are other acoustic DIs and effects that you can get out there. Just do your research, maybe watch some other YouTube videos on some different DIs and acoustic effects. Uh, but you do want to get something that's just going to help your acoustic shine and sound awesome. Guitar stands, another thing to not cheap out on. So you can see here, I'm using the Hercules guitar stands. I've got my acoustic and electric sitting on these things. I was using a regular stand. I don't even remember the brand of it, but it, it just fell apart. It fell apart after like, I don't know, a year and a half or something like that. So you're just going to do yourself a favor by getting quality guitar stands. Because again, you're going to be playing often. Hopefully you're going to be playing as much as I'm playing out soon, maybe even more. So get quality gear. On that note, cables, uh, you're going to need XLR cables to connect your speakers to your soundboard. And of course, you're going to need XLR cables for the microphone and quarter inch cables probably for your effects, your guitar effects and that sort of thing. Uh, what I recommend doing is getting a top brand cable. Okay. Uh, I use the Proco cables. That's always done it for me. I've never had any problems with those cables. They've never gone bad on me. So that's just the brand that I stick with. And I'm really trying not to give you guys brands because there are other good brands out there as well. I just want to tell you what's been working for me. The other route you can take for sound is the portable PA route. And as you can see on screen here, my friend Sevi, a traveling gentleman, he's playing through the Bose. I think it's the Bose L1 system. And I believe Bose was probably the one that kind of started this whole thing. There are many other brands out there making the portable PAs. But the two main differences here is number one, you're going to save a lot of time and setup. I've seen people put these things together in less than a minute. The other thing is going to save a lot of space as well. And remember, a lot of these live solo gigs are going to be at venues that have small spaces. You're just going to kind of have to make do with what you have. So having a portable PA Again, it's just going to save you a lot of time and space. And here you can see my friend Mallory Moyer. She's a phenomenal musician, and she does this full time as well. She's using a portable system. I think it's a different brand here. Uh, in this image, she's actually got two of them. Now, again, in most cases, you're only going to need one. That's going to be plenty. Uh, but for some of her larger gigs, her larger venues that she plays at, she'll use two systems. And she actually uses these systems for her band as well, her full band. They play through two of these portable systems here. Uh, so it's pretty cool. It just saves a lot of time and space. And again, I mentioned earlier, I'm considering making that leap because I've been setting up what it feels like to be for a full band here the past several years. And I could have saved a lot of time and energy on just this one device here. Now, you will still need a lot of the cables, of course, your vocal and guitar devices. Uh, you'll still need your mic and mic stand, all that good stuff. These systems, I think all these systems have built-in effects as well. But remember, you may still want your own effects. You might not like the onboard effects as much. I know me, I always like the external effects, especially when it comes to guitar. You want a certain sound for your guitar and you want things that are specifically made, especially when you're playing acoustic guitar. So that's just a preference. But you know, again, the main thing with these portable systems is the space and the time and also you're getting a wider array of sound out of these things i think it's like 180 degrees if i'm not mistaken with most of these systems whereas the traditional pa speakers it's a little bit more narrow than that okay so again it depends on the venue it depends on what you're doing and where you're playing but i think these portable systems are pretty cool again i'm considering taking the leap sooner or later but anyway that's a rundown of the gear again guys i've got all this gear listed in the description of this video so feel free to check that out you're almost ready to book your first live solo performance but there's one more thing that we need to discuss first that is your online presence why do you need this? Well, in short, the venue owner, the venue manager or booking agent, whoever's responsible for getting you those gigs, they need quick and easy access 
to see and hear what you sound like and just to see what you're all about as a musician. And remember at the beginning of this video, we talked about filming your open mic performances. Well, this is where you're going to take the absolute best of those clips and you're going to put them out there on the internet so that you can showcase what you're all about and then people can hear what you sound like. So there's two forms of being out there online. One is social media, which to me, you absolutely must be out there on some sort of social media platform because this is the easiest and quickest way to share a video clip of what you sound like. The second form is having your own website, which I strongly recommend. That's not something that you need right this moment, but it is something that I want you to consider in the near future. So let's shift back over to social media. And I know sometimes people kind of have mixed views of being out there on social media. Look, I understand that, but here's the mindset that I want you to have. You're not on social media to make friends. You're not on there to look at funny videos. You're not on there to discuss politics or look at this or read that or whatever. You're on there for one sole purpose. That is to build your brand to showcase what you're all about. And of course, again, have some footage of you playing and singing live so that the venues know what you sound like so that they can book you. That being said, you want to treat this like a business, meaning you want to have a business account. Now, I'm not going to get into any specific social media platform in this video. I will have another video at some point going in depth into the online assets that we're talking about. Uh, but in this video, I just want to give you the basics of what you need before you get out there. So set up a business account. You can just Google whatever platform and how to create a business account. You'll find the instructions there. I'm not going to give that to you because those may change over time. They always do. But one specific platform I'll share an example of uh, is my business Facebook account. Again, I don't use my personal account. The personal account in our case is kind of useless, okay? I use the business account, and in this case, it's Jason Stallworth Music. That's what I'm labeled under. So you could even set up your account the same way. Your name, not your name, but your name, <laughs> music, and that will be your business account. Again, just look on the platform or Google how to do that and just follow those steps. And this page is all about your music. Sure, I might share something personal with my audience here and there. Uh, I often do that, but the majority of my posts are all about music. And I do the exact same thing with my other social platforms as well. I do that with my Instagram, my TikTok, talk and we'll do it with whatever new platform that comes out. I know it's a bit overwhelming and I'm not going to say you have to be on every single platform that exists. You don't just pick maybe two of the most common platforms. And again, don't get emotional. This is important guys. Don't get emotional about the platform. You have a different mindset with social media than everyone else has. Again, you're not on there to make friends and look at funny stuff or whatever. You're on there to showcase your brand and showcase what you're all about and to grant easy access to those people that may want to hire you to perform at their venue. Now again, the website, I do encourage you to have that at some point. It's not a necessity, but I just want to share this page right here. Uh, this is jasonstallworth.com. That's my website slash live. This is a page I made on my website. And this is what I provide to booking agents, to venue owners and managers, any place that I want to get into where, where I'm trying to get into for the first time. This is the page I present. With your own website, you've got a lot more control over really everything. The layout, where you want the videos, what content goes on there and so forth. And of course, you can always update that as you need to. And lastly, it just looks more professional to have your own website. So real quick, before we get to the next part, because I'm about to share some tips on how to land that first gig, how to go about that but if you don't have your own website I suggest first seeing if your name is available as a com domain if your name is not available then I would say your name music.com that would work out really well too and the quickest way to do that is just go to a hosting company I use WPX hosting I've been using them for many years for all of my websites uh, for many legitimate reasons so I do have a link to WPX in the description of this video of course along with many other assets uh, in the description uh, that is an affiliate link by the way I do get a small commission if you decide to sign up through them 
uh, but you can at least check to see if your domain is available and hey you might want to go ahead and sign up for hosting and at least you have the page and you can start working on that if it's something you want to get into right now all right the time has come finally so you've been performing your open mics you've been going out to see other musicians perform taking notes you've got your set list with about three hours of music you can perform you've got the gear set up to get started and you've got an online presence out there with some video footage that you've been taking from your open mics to showcase what you can do. Now I'm going to give you a few approaches to landing your first gig and you can use these approaches going forward to continue getting live solo gigs. The first approach is to find out if the place that you've been performing open mic night also has live solo acts. Maybe they do open mic for example on a Wednesday night like Bootleggers Brewing, the brewery I was at in the beginning of this video, and maybe they have live music on Friday and Saturday nights. Well that would be the perfect way to get your first gig. You're already supporting the venue by being there for open mic you're performing you've got video footage of that performance and like Sevi, a traveling gentleman mentioned early on in the video when I had him give you some tips and expectations for open mic he even mentioned that a lot of times the person hosting open mic the bartender or if the manager or owner if they happen to be there they're looking for talent and a lot of times open mic is where they're looking so this is a great way to get your foot in the door and get that first live solo gig another great approach is to Simply use your online presence to land solo gigs. Just go to the social media pages of the venues that you wish to perform at and simply send them a short little message and tell them your name, tell them what you're all about, the style of music you play. Now you can also go to their website, and this is another great strategy to use. Go to their website and see if they have a contact specific for music. A lot of venues do, and they actually have a form on their website that they'll want you to fill out and complete. And of course, they'll want your online assets as well to showcase what you can do and how you sound but that's another good method so use the social media use the messaging there but also go to the website of the venue and see if there's a contact specific for music or if there's just a contact email in general just shoot them a message over tell them what you're about and of course include the link to your social media page or your website page now if you want to get a little bit more personable here using the same strategy that we just talked about instead of sending the venue a message or an email why don't you go visit that venue go visit them maybe order a drink or some food and just ask to speak to someone who is in charge of scheduling and booking the live music and take that route and even if that person's not there you can still hand them a business card with maybe a QR code that goes to your social media and or website or just share it with that person and then maybe follow up with an email later or a phone call if you get the contact phone number of that person and some of those venues may Maybe venues that you went to see someone else perform at. Remember at the beginning of this video, as you were starting to perform open mics, I encouraged you to go out there and see other people play, see them perform, and try to establish a relationship with some of the people that work there, and of course the artist that's playing at that time. And if you're doing that, then you'll already be known when you go in to pitch yourself as a live musician wanting to perform there. On that note, if you've befriended some of these musicians that you've gone to see perform or if you have a good friend that's out there doing it you might consider asking them if it's okay if you can sit in on their break and maybe play a song or two this is an excellent way to get in because you're kind of already validated by the person letting you get up there and perform on their break just make sure that you're at the level to perform really, really well, okay? Uh, now, some performers may say, no, absolutely not. I'm not letting you do that. Or some may say, no, I can't let you do that. That's okay. Don't push it if that's the case. Just let it go. But it doesn't hurt to ask because if you can get up there and perform a song or two on someone's break and then the, the staff likes you or if the owner happens to be there, well, that's a really good way to get your foot in the door as well. In fact, that's how I landed a specific gig a while back. My neighbor, he goes by Tourist Bob. Uh, he invited me on stage to come up there and play during his break. I did that. The bar owner was there and bam, I got a gig and it just, it just snowballed from there in a good way. And I have also paid that forward. I've helped a couple other folks get gigs. I actually turned around and helped Tourist Bob get a gig somewhere else just by talking to my booking agent and so forth. So it's just something we do. We have a, a really small network 
network of cool musicians and we try to help each other out. We don't really look at it as competition because there's plenty of places to play around our area. Again, if someone says no, don't push it, don't get upset at them, just okay, fine. That's just another strategy that you might want to consider using. Now remember, in the description of this video, there are other resources for you, other videos to watch, other blog posts to read. There's also a timeline so that you can just go to different parts of the video here if there's some things you just want to go back to and rewatch. And of course, rewatch this video as many times as you need to because I believe this is going to help you get out there and start playing those live solo gigs. It is such a cool thing to do you're doing something you love you're getting paid for it you're building your skill set as a live musician and there's just no greater feeling than that also drop a question if you have any questions leave that in the comments folks i hope this video helped you i want to see you get out there and do this thing you've got it so again leave me any questions in the comments and stay tuned for more content on this topic here uh, i'm going to be cranking out more videos on that note i've got a playlist of videos for tips for playing live solo gigs. Uh, you'll also see some videos popping up here that you can go to next. There's one, uh, how to get the crowd engaged. There's also one on gear setup and so forth. So do check those out. And I will see you guys again very soon.